Hey, well, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to The Collision. Daniel here to talk about the new Kung Fu Panda film. It just hit theaters. I've seen it, so let's talk about it. So this film, the fourth entry in the very popular animated Kung Fu Panda saga starring the voice of Jack Black, um, returns, and this time it does see Poe, uh, the lovable, uh, kind of butt-kicking, dumpling-eating panda, as a slightly more sort of aged, experienced uh, dragon warrior, still able to do kung fu and kick butt. Yeah, in this film, he is also tasked um, to, to start beginning the transition away from just sort of the famous warrior to become more of like a spiritual leader, uh, a, a kind of a mentor for the next generation. And I think intentionally or not, uh, Kung Fu Panda 4 as a film largely parallels Poe's own journey uh, within the film. This is a franchise now that is four films deep as well as I know some animated uh, TV series. And I do think this is sort of the film that will cause some audiences just to wonder how many more adventures can DreamWorks sort of squeeze out of this very bankable and successful franchise. On the other hand, at least to me personally, uh, this is also a film that is proof that the panda is not quite past his prime just yet. Because I really enjoyed this film. Uh, I, I just thought it was a ton of fun. Uh, I do think the series itself doesn't feel as fresh or inventive as like the first couple of Kung Fu Panda uh, movies once did. But I do think it remains just as fun. Uh, this is a, a funny movie. It's a wholesome movie. And I think it is an entertaining one that all ages can enjoy. Which doesn't come as a huge surprise to me uh, because I've always enjoyed the Kung Fu Panda films. Sort of the Jack Black inspired brand of humor uh, just hits me right in the sweet spot. Always gets me to... Uh, chuckle. And I just do think there's something very endearing and just refreshing about the way that these films have sort of bucked the trend of sort of, you know, having a, a protagonist that feels very unworthy and burdened by the responsibility, sort of, you know, the Spider-Man type hero, and instead just continues to offer a, a hero that's just bursting with enthusiasm and just kind of loves being a hero more than anything else in the world. But even more than that, I think as a parent, uh, I saw this movie with my two nine-year-old twin boys. I do think there's also something commendable about this series that it has always sort of steered and kind of veered away from some of the concerning kind of content areas. Because this film, like the previous three films in this series, there is no like, kind of over the heads of kids, you know, dirty jokes to sort of please uh, the parents. Uh, there's nothing that kind of wades into some of the more touchy areas thematically or content wise as far as like sexuality and even just no language or just like kind of more crude words uh, that seem to have just sort of plagued so many other animated films in recent years. And kind of instead of that, Kung Fu Panda 4 continues uh, to just offer clean and I think simple fun for all ages. But of course, the question of whether the animated film is wholesome does seem like that is half the battle these days for parents. But there's also just the question of whether the film is in fact any good. And thankfully, I do think this film passes that trial as well. I think admittedly, there is a sense of sort of going through the motions with this film where it sort of tosses in all the tried and true elements of the series into a blender and kind of spits out just one more uh, Kung Fu Panda adventure. I don't think this movie comes across as particularly all that inspired, uh, but it's just a lot of fun. Because as you would expect if you've seen the previous Kung Fu Panda films, this film is very action heavy. There is plenty of sort of high flying Kung Fu action sequences, I think to keep sort of younger viewers entertained. And kind of like I mentioned earlier, this movie is also hilarious. I don't know if it's just sort of my brand of humor, uh, but there are several kind of laugh out loud, uh, funny gags and just a, almost a barrage of just sort of kind of humorous side comments or quotes. And while the film doesn't necessarily um, aspire to go too far beyond that and to, like plunge too deep into, you know, like emotional or thematic uh, depth. I do think there are enough sort of slower moments and character growth that does give this story like a sense of, of purpose and meaning beyond just sort of being entertaining spectacle. And much of this film does unfold almost like revisiting the greatest hits of this franchise. I do think Poe does demonstrate that he does have at least a few new tricks up his sleeve, at least if pandas had sleeves. And you see that with the animation, because there are several of these action sequences that are infused with, I think, very effective sort of stylistic decisions. It never goes into like, you know, beyond the Spider-Verse level of just, you know, 
mind-blowing visuals but it does do some cool stuff you can tell the animators are having fun like my favorite probably is there's an action sequence that takes place that is um, portrayed almost all in like silhouettes you just sort of see the dark shapes against sort of the bright uh, background and there's just enough of sort of similar scenes and decisions like that just to keep things interesting there's also a new character in this who is voiced by Aquafina who seems to be making the rounds these days uh, voicing characters in all the animated films and she essentially takes her character takes the place of sort of the classic the the furious five from the previous um, films who only appear in this briefly like in a cameo uh, at the end and I do think for some people the classic characters will be missed because they were fun they're entertaining um, but sort of by shifting the focus to this new character the sort of sly fox it does kind of offer a new dynamic which places Poe like more like the mentor role rather than like equals or like being the one that's less uh, experience and I think allows the filmmakers to to take the story in some past that it hasn't been able to kind of explore with the previous film. As far as content to consider, if things going on on the surface of this, like I said, this is a pretty clean movie. This is a pretty wholesome movie. There's really not a whole lot uh, for parents to be uh, concerned about. As far as language, there's really nothing here. There's no profanities and really no just sort of crude uh, language that parents might be uh, not want their kids to repeat uh, beyond maybe the fact that the word but uh, gets spoken quite frequently all throughout this film. Violence, as you expect, there's this is a kung fu movie, there is violence, although it's all very harmless, sort of cartoonish, uh, you know, characters punching and kicking and throwing themselves, uh, but nothing over the top uh, with that. The only thing that maybe you might uh, rub some parents the wrong way is there's kind of a recurrent gag of quite dark uh, humor concerning kind of three very adorable little bunny rabbits who just have like almost a you know sadistic like thirst for violence and you know they're kind of adorably saying things like violence makes our tummies tickle and uh, again I thought the characters were hilarious I thought it was it was well done uh, but that is sort of a gag that this film returns to um, kind of quite frequently as far as sexuality there's nothing here either the only thing that does um, kind of might relate to that is that there is sort of a central plot point uh, around the fact that Poe, the panda, has two dads, one being his sort of adopted dad who is a goose, and then one being his like biological father uh, who is obviously a panda. And kind of because of that, several times Poe's referring to, you know, my dads or the two, the, the two father figures, um, you know, are kind of quick to proclaim that they are sort of, in fact, Poe's dad. And I think the characters, those, the two father figures are kind of linked together throughout this film. They're sort of paired off and go on an adventure together. And they seem to um, have a, a mutual respect and friendship. The film never implies that they are anything more than just two, um, you know, father figures that respect each other and kind of are united in their shared love uh, of Poe. Uh, so I don't think there is anything there, though obviously this, you know, the cultural backdrop and everything going on, some of the language and some of that, some people might read more into that than I think is really going on. And just a few other kind of content areas. Uh, this film doesn't necessarily like push any religious views, although like the previous films, spirituality is once again very central to this Kung Fu Panda uh, world. And a lot of it is based on kind of like Eastern religions or um, kind of even like pantheistic uh, beliefs. And so you do have characters that talk about like, you know, speaking, asking the universe or speaking to uh, the universe and there is like a spirit realm and characters are able to perform these like mystical kind of uh, deeds or powers based on either like their kung fu training or else um, kind of like meditative uh, practices so that's in there although I don't think that it's necessarily like pushing or uh, preaching any kind of uh, spirituality in that sense. And the only other kind of content thing I can think of is there is a scene that takes place in a tavern. And in that scene, there's a character that is shown drinking in kind of an ambiguous, unspecified beverage. Although later with some like the jokes and stuff, the implication is that it's some sort of like intoxicating drink. As far as themes and messages and these things going on beneath the surface of this film, I think kind of at its core, Kung Fu Panda 4 is exploring the theme of just change, uh, providing like a, a more positive perspective. I think on one of life's realities that whether we're young or we're old does tend to stir up feelings of just anxiety or trepidation and 
fear. Because uh, like I said, I saw this movie with my two nine-year-old uh, twin boys. And when I asked them after the movie, like, what was the message? What did you learn from this? Uh, they were very quick, uh, both of them, to respond that change can be a good thing. And while the message is obviously simple enough for a young kid to to be able to grasp that, I do think there are also elements of that that can resonate even with older uh, audiences because Poe is essentially having a midlife crisis. Uh, he's struggling to move on from his like identity as this famous dragon warrior and to sort of step aside and um, you know kind of move on to a new thing and allow the younger generation to, to kind of rise up and, and fill uh, that role. So I do think despite, I think the relative simplicity of its theme, it does offer, I think, meaningful kind of lessons and a message uh, that I think viewers of all ages will be able to just process in different ways. And kind of regarding change, uh, the film's message is both that change can be a good thing and should be embraced, but also that change, particularly when it comes to like behavioral um, issues, is in fact possible. Because uh, Zen, who's the the character that is voiced by Aquafina is a sly fox. In, in the film, she's, you know, her backstory is that she was an orphan, and so she was raised among criminals, and kind of as a result of that, she herself has embraced a life of crime. And in many ways, this film is almost primarily about her character uh, arc, as she's sort of caught in the middle of like a tug of war between Poe and then the chameleon, who's the villain in, in this film, and sort of forced to evaluate whether she can, in fact, kind of transcend where she's come from and sort of how she, the expectations of how she should act and choose to be uh, different. Because there's a, a scene where the chameleon, the villain, remarks, she says, for your sake and mine, never change. And as should be expected from an animated kids film, uh, the movie obviously resolves that conflict in a very uh, kind of positive way. Uh, so while this film, I don't think is necessarily just ripe with very immediate biblical implications or parallels, I do think there are no shortage of just positive like, applications for parents to be able to discuss with their children, uh, such as just choosing to do the right thing even when those around you are not doing the right thing, or just embracing changes as like a, a you know positive opportunity uh, rather than something to be scared of so in the end i really enjoyed this movie and maybe more importantly uh, my both my kids really enjoyed uh, watching this film as well uh, this is a film that does sort of feature brief cameos from like all the villains from the previous films and it does center on a storyline where you know sort of passing the torch uh, of you know the dragon warrior to the next generation so it is fair to wonder you know if kung fu panda's adventures are finally coming to an end if there's this only so far you can kind of take this particular uh, story so while this story may not have a whole lot new to offer audiences i do think with a very fun story a very positive message and this is an overall wholesome experience the lovable panda is not done just yet this film is a success and i do think that a lot of younger viewers are going to have a great time with this movie but hey i'd love to hear what you think if you see this or if you take your kids to see this jump into the comment section let's have a conversation about that and if you haven't done so I encourage you guys to subscribe to our channel become a collider we got movie reviews a, a podcast interviews just a bunch of fun stuff would love to have you be a part of that but most of all guys thanks for watching stay safe and continue to Collide through World for Christ.